What's up everyone, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing a review for Leon's Banner. I have to say right from the start, this is a must pull banner because of Leon. Leon is the new protagonist of the game for the new story arc and he comes alongside three other styles in this banner. This banner is special because when you do a multi pull here, you get 15 pulls. Uh, so don't do single pulls here, please, you will not get a good value. And Leon is a new character that uses guns and he is a boss killer while also being a very good farmer. Well, let's click here on summon details. Uh, we also have new stuff here on summon rates you'll be able to understand. Uh, there are four premium styles here, so there's still 1% that will give you off banners. The off banners were just updated. There are plenty of interesting off banners. You'll not be getting those wheels and thomas anymore so the banner gives even more volo because of this but from now on all premium banners will have off banners when there are less than five premium pools so now we are on our srsdb.com leon has very good status starting with 112 percent dexterity and 86 percent agility these are the focus so that he attacks first and attacks with good damage if you are using deadly pierce x formation leon will often attack before the enemies when farming his endurance and will are not so high, just a little above average. Uh, he does not need STR and his intelligence is on 72% because he can actually debuff. So for passives we have full prep number 2. On a start of a round we get 10% increase in damage to the squad and also a defense boost stance that decreases damage for 15%. This only lasts for one turn, so for farming it's nice because you can just get it again on the next round, increasing the damage and sustain of your team. But in boss fights, in one turn it's over. Then the second passive is called Wind Munitions. When attacked, damage will be reduced by 25% at all times. And the second one gives himself a follow-up attack called Wind Chaser on a start off of battle. So every attack that he performs will have a follow-up called Wind Chaser. It's a single target attack, we will talk more about that later. It also makes him lose 1 LP because of this. But it already gives it on start, so all attacks that you do will have a chase. Then we have Gun Arcana 4. When attacking with guns, damage increases by 20%. And landing a weak attack will give you 20% more. Most of the time, Leon will be used to deal weak damage. So 40% most of the time, and when not doing weak damage, will be 20%. Alongside full prep, you get 50% when farming. Let's check the attacks inside the game. Quick draw is his first one. This one is a 0 BP attack, so it's cheap. It just deals a little extra damage than a normal attack and it's made for his auto rotation exactly then the second one wind revolver this one is what makes this guy so good wind revolver gives himself a chase call it wind chaser the same one that we saw as a passive so he sacrifices one lp to get another chase and will uh just get one bp back when he actually chases so well right now you just use quick draw you will have a chase attack that is called Wind Chaser. And if you use Wind Revolver, then you have two follow-up attacks. So this guy will already do two hits. But then you can do this four times. You lose one LP on the start of a fight because you get Wind Chaser. And then you can use Wind Revolver four times. What this makes allows him to attack six times in a turn. Yeah, six times because of Wind Revolver. And every time that he follows up with a chase, he gets one BP back. This allows him to prepare for anti-material shot. This attack here is amazing. It's triple S with very low cost, as you can see by here. 8 BP for triple S damage with a gunner and also debuffs endurance. His intelligence may not be so spectacular, but sometimes it will still debuff the enemy, allowing you to do even more damage. He himself can do it all. Decrease uh, the endurance, the enemy gives himself more BP so that he can get back and use this attack again, keep the buffing endurance and keep hitting further with follow-ups. So, when you are prepared with all of his chains attacks, he's gonna use anti-material shot and then follow up with five attacks. So a total of six attacks and then after that he can keep using this again and again and again because he regains 5 VP for each of the chase attacks that comes from his wind chaser. 
So yeah, this guy has a totally new design. This is extremely powerful because allows you to just use Lian as your only damage dealer in a lot of fights. Because he attacks multiple times, this character benefits a lot from buffers, in especially those that increases his dexterity, but also those that increases the damage like attack enhancement and morale up things will make Lian even stronger. You can bring now four sustained characters and use Lian and the fight won't take too much. In the past, when we wanted to use a full sustain squad, fights would take a lot of times. Like, the Ludwig fight took like 40 minutes to clear by using Nears as a damage dealer. Now Leon can do that in way less time. So something I didn't say is that when Chaser attack is actually blunt and slash, deep power. So a little extra than a normal attack and it carries two elements. So he can also cover slash content. You already have two types of damage, Blunt and Slash. But what if I tell you that he can also cover Cold? Yeah, with his S style we have Ice Revolver. This is just like Wind Chaser, but it's Ice Chaser instead. He gives himself a Blunt and Cold Chase. He can also cast this four times, so that he opens with his attack, any of his attacks that he chooses. Then he will have one Chase that is the Wind Chaser, because of his passive called Wind Munitions. And then he can use four hits with Ice and Blunt instead. The only problem is the Ice Chaser do not get PP back. Instead, it gives Guard down, meaning that you will do even bigger damage by decreasing the resistance of the enemy. So you can choose to go with four uh, Wind Revolver or with four Ice Revolver just depending on the content. Leon covers three different types, blunt, slash, and cold. And let me tell you, his damage output is just so good that unless the boss resists blunt, slash, and cold, you can use him for all types of content. Yeah, this guy is just so powerful that you can use him all the time. Every turn you'll be doing like six hits. The first hit will depend if you are just going for Wind Chaser. You always have enough BP to use Anti-Material Shot. Remember, you get one BP back with each Wind Revolver. So, Anti-Material Shot follows up by five hits. That gives five BP back. And on the next turn, you have Anti-Material Shot again. Yeah, for bosses, this is amazing. It's broken. And another interesting setup is, depending on the boss fight, you can just go and use Wind Revolver three times and use at least one Ice Revolver. Because that way you will always be the buffing guard down, even through the enemies not weak to cold or blunt. Let's say that you are facing a boss that's only weak to slash. Giving guard down will increase the damage of all the other attacks. So one Ice Bullet and three Wind Bullets will do just fine. But you will lose 1 BP and maybe sometimes you will not have enough for anti-material shot on every turn. And let's talk about how you farm with Leon as well. This guy works for all types of content. If you want to go for a single target, just use anti-material shot and then he will cycle quick draw and back to anti-material shot all the time. And remember that he already starts with one chase, so anti-material shot is always followed up by Wind Chaser, even when farming. So the damage will be amazing. And then Quick Draw is also chasing. So in three turns, this guy is always attacking twice. If you want him to do AoE damage, just go with his S style and inherit Random Shot Plus. And uh, you can use this attack three times in a row. Random Shot is very powerful by the coast. 5 VP will allow Leon to perform well in the new story stages where we want triple AoE attacks. Or you can just go with Ricochet Parade if you want. If there is an event with only one wave, maybe you want bigger damage. And this one will give you exactly that. So, single target rotations, AoE rotations, boss mechanics makes Leon the best damage dealer the game has right now. He's a triple S character that will stay relevant for all the foreseeable future. He gets a future style in JP. This other style is a little different. It's also a wind caster. He's gonna use wind spell, so you may want to forge a weapon with the wind element. This guy here can um, work similarly, but there are some other things based on how he operates. Uh, you still want to bolt, to be honest. For my last words, Leon is a meta character that will change how we face hard challenges. 
He has one problem though. When you use all of his chains attacks, you get him to one LP. That means that you need to bring people to make Leon survive because he's your champion. He's gonna kill the boss, but he takes time. He takes four turns to start dealing damage. So it's a different way to kill enemies, especially those with a lot of HP. But when he gets his setup, he's gonna do a lot of damage. Leon is a triple S character. We're gonna place him on the top of the tier list. And since his banner now has a discount, you only need 30,000 gems to summon and PD. There's no excuses. Go get your Leon. He will be worth. The next character is Monica and oh boy how many versions of Monica we have. The first one is given out inside the game, the second is a Christmas exclusive, the third one close to first half anniversary, the fourth one with the first anniversary, then this one released it alongside the second anniversary. Now we have this Monica that is being released alongside Leon. And don't forget Global X Monica. In an SS style as well. Well, uh, to compare the status, I guess we should be comparing to this second anniversary Monica because she's kind of recent. Well, we have lower dexterity as you can see, but a little higher endurance. Agility is very similar. We do have lower intelligence. She's not a primary debuffer and a little extra view. So yeah, we, we receive less damage than the second anniversary Monica. The other status don't matter too much, but she does have a higher love, and it makes sense when you check what she can do. Well, we have one arrow for dexterity at 102%. That's not bad, but it's not as high as the current damage dealers. Her will has two arrows, and these are her focus. So for passive, the first one we have is called Mastery 1. On the start of a turn, she gets 5% dexterity, 5% will, and 1 BP. Well, it's good to have a lot of effects in a single passive, the BP is more important even, but 5% next return will take so much time to stack, and in the end, in 4 turns you only have 20%. Some characters can get 20% with a single passive, so, well, it's the price you pay to have an overload of effects. Then the second one is called Strength and Energy, giving her 10% increase in damage and starting the fight with 12. Then we have Fired Up 6, increasing damage by 30%. So 40% from passive, starts with 12, gets 1 BP every turn, and has 5% increase to dexterity and will. Now inside the game, checking the attacks, the first one is Gift Brick. This attack here is not so powerful, it's only deep power, but it recovers HP and she recover like 800 from her. So if you need to heal, you can do this without having to use a healer or LP. It's for long fights. And the second skill, Present of Pleasure. This is an amazing skill that carries a lot of different effects. For first, it's fast, so it goes before the enemies. And it will give you morale up to the squad. That increases 25% of the damage. It lasts for two turns. Then we have a recover of around 180 for the squad because of her love. And also gives one BP to everyone and buffs charisma for 30%. So we are using 7 BP when we awake, and because we get 1 BP back, that means that you can use this twice in a row if you want so, for BP. But the best thing is to use this on turn 1, then on turn 3, and every 2 turns, and you will be able to. But there is only one problem, you use 1 LP to use this. So you cannot cast it more than 5 times. And it should be enough during the fight, and getting this BP will also help people that have some different cycles and may want 1bp to fix and getting charisma will allow you to heal more maybe when you use it with characters like um, I token and Nawal's daughter that also buffs love and charisma or even matchwork number three you stack this so much that it makes it even better now we have the last attack noble cross plus noble cross plus it's strong it's a power 12 BP coast for double elements, we have Pierce and Sun, and fast, so it's very useful for farming, but she does not have a follow-up attack, and you need her pass style too. So here we are, Noble Cross, you will need to inherit Blurry Needles from her second anniversary style, so you have a full Pierce AoE cycle. This does not have Sun, so you are locked on Pierce. This cycle is actually better in a pass version of Xenon, 
Xenon one in a half anniversary style. Marquis no more can do it and he will be able to amplify. He needs to inherit from the platinum style. So yeah, Noble Cross plus. And then he keep using like needles. This one has sun. So as a general, this version of Xenon is better on doing this than Monica herself. But you can also use both together on Deadly Pierce X formation and it should work pretty fine. And the second good inheritance is 100 Lotus. For 7 VP, you have a double hit attack with C power. Since she gets 4 BP a turn, this is not so bad. You can cycle between 100 Lotus and Gift Prick. Gift Prick heals, so sometimes you may need to use this one. And every time you use Gift Prick, you save 2 BP. But if you are on a boss fight, you should be opening with Present of Pleasure. And after some time, if you don't need this anymore, you go for damage. Another interesting thing is that 100 Lotus can instant kill targets with a low chance. I know low chance is not high, but if the enemies don't have any resistance, you will be instant killing them if you are using her in the right formations. And because the new version of Monica has one more BP on turn one, you can use this two times in a row. If there is a wave where you will have only two enemies and they can miss and kill it, you will kill them with that attack. And if the second wave also has two enemies, Monica will be able to kill four enemies by herself. Well, she won't have enough BP to use that again on wave number three, but she at least has enough to use Gift Prick if that happens. This is how she works. This kit is interesting. It's not necessary. If you got I Token, he still has a better cycle for things. But Monica is a different character that will also be used in the Resemblance battles, where having a character with sustain may be very good. She can heal without having to rely on a healer, and she can give support to the squad, increasing damage and healing everyone on a fast skill. So this gives her a very good sustain and support kit. But she's not mandatory, she will be receiving a double S grade. If you don't have the past version of Monica, this decreases her value a little since her attacks are not so uh, good by themselves. She kind of needs inheritance to perform better in boss fights. It's still an interesting unit and the second more interesting character is by uniqueness. Now, just for comparison's sake, in JP, there's not that many characters that can buff BP for everyone. There is a future version of Buning that can give 2 BP to the squad, but she sacrifices 2 LP in doing so and has a much higher BP cost. There is the third version of Matriarch, there is this other version of Minstrel, uh, this other character here, I forgot the name, and there is also Virgil. Virgil can do it, but it's damage alongside BP plus with his future style. And Monica is much better than Skaya in doing this. You can compare them all and there's much more volley going for Monica than Skaya. As for future styles, there is a bow version of Monica in JP that's very far in the future and she has a column attack uh, with double S power alongside heal with attack enhancement and another attack that can charm and debuffs STR. The next character is Leslie. She's a newcomer from Saga Frontier 2, uses his words and carries water element. She's also a healer, that's why. Her status suffered from being a healer, so she sacrifices some of the damage potential to have bigger love. Only 96% STR and 92 agility. She's at least pretty fast. The bonuses come for those two status, but her endurance and will are not so high. And we do have just a little above average love for a healer. Um, for passives, we have the lead heal link on the end of a turn. She has 25% chance to heal herself in a random ally by around 700 or 800. It's good when it happens, but sometimes she can even heal herself two times. Then the second one is War Cry for Slash and Cold. She increases 5% damage to everyone in the squad for Slash and 5% for everyone in the squad for Cold. For herself, her attacks are Slash and Cold, so she gets 10% increase. Then she gets High Weak Tension, giving her 20% at all times and 15% plus when hitting a weak target. So 45% and max tension when hitting weak targets and this random chance to heal herself in a ally. For skills we have Droplet, this is a heal spell, so she needs a water element as word to heal better. It uses 3 BP and 1 LP and gives Guard Up. Guard Up decreases damage by 25% for 2 turns. Uh, she is gonna be a good healer for Remembrance events, and uh, besides that she's not a good healer on other content. 
Now we have the second skill, it's called Aqua Flash. Well, do you know Rick? Rick has Fire Flash, now we have Aqua Flash. It's more similar to Rick instead of Sun Flash from Rapina, because Rapina's one has a 4 BP coast, Aqua Flash at least has a 3 BP coast, just like Rick's, and it's much better. Deep Power, it's good because you can use this all the time, as long as you want. For farming, it helps. Although, Leslie wants to start with her last attack called Icicle Surge. This attack here could be so much better, they needed to buff this. It's only C power and 9 BP coast. She doesn't have any way to get BP, so she cannot even use this two times in a three turn cycle. She only opens with slash and cold damage, just like the other attack, but buffs all surviving allies STR by 40% on max level. But it's not fast. So you have to use Amazon Raid X and place her on the front line to buff all the other characters. And her own damage is not so high, because she buffs only after attacking. So, although it's good, it could be much better. And there are other characters that can also buff the squad for STR in the future with much lower coast. So my problem with Icicle Surge is the coast and the power. It's close to B power at least, but could still be much better. By not being fast, they could have increased the damage. Uh, we can compare this to Torpe. We have this attack called Savage Slash that increases STR by 25% and it's fast. So you can use this in a different position on Amazon Raid X if you want. And there is also Nora. Nora has a new version that uses Axis and she has the same attack. And you can even import this into her club version so that she uses this three times in a row because it starts with 12. So the utility of this attack, it's not so good. It has competition and you cannot even use this two times in a three turn cycle. So very limited. There's nothing that Leslie shines. I think that her excuse is to be a healer for Remembrance Sword content. Leslie also doesn't have any single target attack, so most of the time you want to use her for farming, and at least you can use Icicle Surge and keep using Aqua Flash. There's not that many slash plus cold damage dealers, so there's less competition on this regard, at least on the cold part. Uh, she tries to do what Rick does without having the fast, powerful attack on start, but can be used here and there. Just not an important character, totally easy to skip, and the last interesting character of the banner. Will only receive an S grade, and only because she's recent and have good passives. And sometimes she will just be easily forgotten by many. Now we have Rouge. There are six versions of Rouge in the game. The first one you can farm. The second one is the first premium one from Battle of Fate. Then we got this one alongside the Monica Anniversary banner. And now the current one, Trials up ahead. There is also this S style that drops from limited time events and a Platinum style too. I guess we have to compare these two styles here. They make more sense. They also share some skills between themselves to make better rotations. Uh, we have lower endurance, around the same dex, which it does not matter. Lower agility, actually much lower. Uh, intelligence is pretty much similar. Uh, much higher will, and similar love and charisma. They don't have much difference between status because of being released so close to each other. But this Rouge has a different type of usage. He is actually a debuffer, status inflictor, and better on long fights than the past version. This past version here is a powerful nuker that can just stack shadow enhancement damage to just one-shot some stuff. But not so strong that he will make so much difference in a boss fight, but actually works well. Going far this one, we have uh, one arrow for intelligence, double arrows for will, so you will need other version of him to get higher increase in intelligence. For passes, we have Breath of Invigoration 1. This gives him a very small heal and 1 BP when he attacks. The heal should be around 160 or something. The second one, when he lands an attack, he buffs intelligence and will by 20%. Well, I guess they give this 20% instead of 15, but it could be something like Apollo. Apollo also has a similar passive, but it goes on the start of a turn, but it's in only 15 instead of 20. So he needs to attack to get a bigger buff, but it does not work before he attacks. When farming, he gets less. 
Then we have fired up six, increasing damage at all times by 30%. And it's his only damage passive. If you compare to his passive style, this one has more damage right from the start with Shadow Imp. Also weak tension and also this overflowing shadow. When farming this one will be much, much better, but not quite in boss fights. For skills, the first one is Energy Bolt. This one is actually very good for the coast. Sea power and carry shadow and lightning damage. He can use it all the time. Then the second one is called Darkness Bolt. This is a unique attack that is also shadow and lightning. And for only 5 VP, you get B damage. That's good enough. Uh, and two things. He will try to debuff Will from a target by 15%. So because he keeps buffing his intelligence, this will be very good to break through uh, status ailments resistance in some boss fights. But not just that, after he uses Darkness Bolts, he buffs his intelligence too. In level 99, it's 25%. So use this on turn 1. If it does not hit on turn 2, you have a higher chance because your intelligence is higher. You got it from passive and from the use of the skill. And then it will probably land later and you will try to debuff Will more often too. And then this Rouge can also inflict status elements with different attacks. This one is just for the preparation. Very good skill. Then the last one is Soul Freeze Plus, allowing also this to be amplified in other characters like uh, Evelyn and Rock. Okay, this is a very good attack. Soul Freeze Plus has a power for only 9 BP and it has a low chance to inflict paralyze. It gets a very high intelligence. If the enemy does not have any resistance, it will probably be paralyzed. In the long fights, uh, this can also be used to paralyze the specific challenges that have more than one enemy. So this guy will compete against Orluge, Ray and all the other uh, status inflictors and it's exactly much better than it seems at first glance. When looking on his kit by himself, you will do more single target damage because he can cycle, he can open with Darkness Bolt and use this so many times because he gets 1 BP back, right? Eventually, you will only be using 4 BP for Darkness Bolt. And when you don't have enough BP, he will just use Energy Bolt, save 1 BP and then get back to Darkness Bolt and cycle between those two things on auto. Well, but this guy is more for manual when you want to debuff or else you're just going for damage and there are better versions for just damage, although he's pretty respectable on this regard too. If you use so freeze and you want an AoE follow up, you have two places where you can find stuff. His Battle of Fate version has Dark Sizzle, it's 4 BP and you regain one so you can keep using this if you want or you can get his Dark Ball attack that buffs Will and makes much more sense into his build but it's 5 BP cost that means that eventually you run out of BP if you open with your Soul Freeze Plus or maybe you just go and keep using this Dark Ball if you want to debuff multiple targets instead of just a single one so this gives more value to the past version of Rouge since Increasing your intelligence makes up for better chances of debuffing intelligence. And now we can also talk about what else can he do. He can inflict some nasty status elements, like he can use Racking to stun. This Racking will be amplified in the future to become Racking Plus and deals better damage. And he's a very good stun inflictor and he gets 4 BP by a turn. He can keep using this as long as he wants. There is also his A version that has Shadow Chains and he can inflict it with a very good rate. He competes with Orluge now and uh, high chance to paralyze is the best chance in the game. Not only that, he can also inflict Poison with Poisonous Blow that's already amplifiable, reducing it to 5. He gets 4, so he can try to keep inflicting Poison. With medium chance, it's very easy to inflict Poison. So, there are combinations that work super fine in Tower. Paralyze and Poison. He can do that all by himself, but he takes time to build up because he needs to debuff Will and then later he goes for higher intelligence with a higher chance to Paralyze and then Poison. But he can do it all by himself, similarly how you can do with Evelyn and Wicked Witch, but she goes for full AoE. Uh, we cannot full AoE Poison here, we can only Paralyze, so there is that. His most common comparison would be for Orluge. Orluge has something else. He can also inflict confusion and stun for AoE instead of just single target. Uh, there is also Wicked Witch. Those two characters are good enough. You don't really need Rouge if you have them. 
but I have to say the Rouge works a little different when compared to Den. Both will also increase their intelligence when attacking, so they are now the best ones on doing this. Christmas Ray can also do similar stuff, but she's very geared towards single target only. So I could say that for people without Wicked Witch and or Luge, Rouge becomes exactly the second most interesting character, but Monica uniqueness still makes her overall better value than Rouge, since you find alternatives for other stuff that Rouge does. But he is at least the third most interesting character for this bunch and uh, will stay relevant because of the way he operates for status elements and will debuff. If you missed it out on the Instrel that just got released recently, this one is a good alternative for that. Also, remember that in Remembrance battles, enemies will be inflicted with Stun and Paralyze. Two things that Rouge does and does with a very good potential. So if you care about this and you don't have alternatives, Rouge now is a very good investment. He's gonna receive a double S grade and stay on the middle. Is a very useful character for challenges from now on. Another type of event that he's gonna work is Tower. If you're still having difficulty with that, Rouge is gonna help you a lot. And now comes the important question, is this banner worth summoning for? Yes, it's one of the best ones we ever had. Carrying a meta character that will define how we clear hard challenges in the future. Leon, you need him, summo for him, no excuses. Then we have a support unit with some interesting kit for long fights with Monica. And then there is Rouge, a character that can inflict damage, status elements, debuffs. And for last, we have Leslie, a character that's easy forgettable but the other three are worth. With only 30,000 gems for a PD, this banner is a must have. With that said, this is my opinion. What is yours? Please see here on the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel, there are links in the description. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.